Yo, 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 we live on location. We had to do this one. Look, this was me and the blackest ones, one of our favorite all-time hoopers, period. It don't even matter. You know what I'm talking about? You talking about a gold medalist a couple times. You talking about a, a Hall of Famer. You talking about an NCAA champ. You talking about a defensive player of the year a few times. You know, Twice. All, all type of type things going on, man. We got, look, New York's, one of New York's pull favorites. Pull spoons out now. You feel me? Everybody pull your <laughs> teaspoons out in New York yeah. City and Texas. You know what I'm saying? We got teaspoon in the building. Thank Appreciation. You. Glad hey, to be look, here. Glad this one of our here. favorite players all time, me and D Miles. Y'all tune in. This was special. Yep. And we're so happy to have you here. So thank you for coming. Man, I'm glad it. you guys got me here. Let's, <laughs> let's punch this thing. Let's do it. Let's do it how you guys do it. I'm happy to be here. Appreciate uh, that. Presented by Hennessy. When you first got to the WNBA, yeah. who was the first person to bust your ass? Ooh. Nobody. Nobody. You was locking all that up. No. That, no. No, and I believe every one of them will tell you no. That's not happening. <laughs> no, no. Hey, look, this is the first person to tell you the opponent's gonna tell you no too, though. <laughs> tell you no. You know, I'll give I'll give props to one who I know was very, very, very difficult to defend, Ooh. and that's Cynthia Cooper. Cool. Uh, she was incredible with what she does. You know, she could shoot it, pass it, dribble it, rebound it. She could do so many different things that made it difficult to defend her. So. But nah, she's not gonna say she bust my ass. No, <laughs> it was it was an all out war out there. So I heard that Pineland, Texas. Mm-hmm. I always thought it was New York and New York everything. Yeah. Pineland, yeah. Texas. Tell us the transition from Pineland, Texas, to New York. How was that? Man, it, it actually speaks for itself. Pine Land, where right. I'm from, it speaks for itself. Really, really small. Eight hundred eighty-two people. Ooh. That's that's how small it is. Everybody know everybody. Everybody knows everybody. No, don't go and look for a stop sign. Stop <laughs> like that. You got about two or three stop signs, and that's about it. But yeah. It was an incredible transition, work, hard work, basically coming out of a hole, yeah. coming out of a hole for someone to be able to see you and give you an opportunity. Uh, and I was given an opportunity to play at Louisiana Tech, and from there, I just, I just took, took advantage of the opportunity, took, took it and just flew with it. Had an opportunity to play on Olympic teams, and from there, your, your vision came to life to yeah. play in America professionally. Then yeah. it came to life playing in the WNBA. The transition was just the game of basketball and the growth from one stage to the next, collegiate, high school, collegially, collegially, professionally. Yeah. That was what the growth was really all about. How did you fall in love with with basketball? Like who who put that in you so yeah. you and you fell in love with? Who put that in you? My first love was baseball. Mm. I was a better baseball player. I would say I am a better baseball player than a basketball player. My mom played softball. My my favorite sport, mm-hmm. basically. Uh, my father was a, a baseball player. He played on the um uh, the minor league team for the Minnesota Twins, and he was back and forth. You know how you go back and forth, back and forth. But it was in the day when, you know, it wasn't acceptable mm-hmm. as, a, as a black man. It wasn't acceptable. Uh, but my father was incredible. If you look to this day and you look in the minor leagues, they have him under as Chuck Witherspoon. Of course, he's Charles Witherspoon, but Chuck Witherspoon, that's my father. Mm-hmm. He still holds the record to this day of grand slams in one game. Mm. Still holds the record with two grand slams in one game, and the third one hit the fence. I don't know who was Ooh, pitching to him. Up. I don't know who was foolish to pitch to him, but <laughs> basketball it was came after baseball. I, I mean, I p- really played everything. I played everything. I, I was one of those kids that your parents said, I got to put this kid in some stuff to keep her disciplined. Well, so, what made basketball the one? Because I'm where I'm from. And where I'm from, that was the only sport that we, as women, were able to play. Mm-hmm. And in college, in high school, they weren't going to allow us to play with the guys. Mm-hmm. I could only play with the little league team. So that made you just, like, I'm committed to basketball. I committed myself so. to basketball, yeah. Did you know anything about, like, other women players, like, before that? Or, or you was just seeing the guys? Like, oh, no, I no, I, I knew about the women. I knew I knew about what they were doing. Of course, we didn't really get to see them on TV, so you really had to study the best way you possibly could, and yeah. that was through encyclopedias yeah. at that time. That was yeah. through encyclopedias. Ooh, generation yeah. ain't heard yeah, no encyclopedias. they ain't heard nothing about all that. <laughs> yeah. so, the Britannica. Oh, man, that, that's where it was. That's <laughs> yeah. where it was all about. So my, so my family would buy it so I could study and know the history of it. Because, of course, there goes Ann Myers. There goes Nancy Lieberman. You know, of, of Nancy, course. my Nancy. coach. My came, coach. Came the, through. The you know, best. Started I to love see them. Nancy And, coach of course, Ms. Harris, God rest her soul, was the, one of the best to be playing it. So you had to really study it to know it. And when I started studying, I started, I said, man, I kind of like this thing. I kind of like the sport. And I just started to grow from there. I actually started when I was four playing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When did you, uh, in high school, when did you transition? It was like, yeah, this, this me right here, this sport. This me. This is what I'm gonna go to college. This is what I want to do. You you, yeah. you start seeing the future, 
with this round ball? <laughs> like when, when, when in high school, when did that year? This is really crazy because I was a sixth grader. Mm. I was a sixth grader and I got a chance to play. I hadn't played with no structured basketball yet, mm -hmm. but they put, give us this little peewee league and we were playing yeah. it. And I started to really, really love it because I got to play at halftime of a, one of the high school games. Uh -huh. And I got to hear the cheers of the fans. And yeah. like, I always played with that rah-rah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I kind of like this. I like the cheering from the fans. I like scoring buckets. I like locking you up. I started to really like it and just started to really push from there. And then uh -huh. I started to have one of the greatest coaches who grabbed on to me as a sophomore. Grabbed me as a sophomore and just kind of laid the law down. What was his name? Her name was Rita Swindell. Oh, her Rita name. Swindell. She was really, really tough on me, mm. but with silence. Mm. Tough with silence. I got kicked off the team. I got. I was bad. You know, I was bad. Yeah. I was bad. Tell me how much being the youngest of six impacted you and impacted you know your your competitiveness yeah. and your toughness. That's probably the greatest thing that happened to me because I'm the baby of those six. Right. So I had to fight for what I needed. I had to fight for what I wanted. <laughs> and heck, they they were hard on me. Mm -hmm. All right, my brothers were extremely hard. Sisters were probably my greatest critics. So they were really hard on me. So I got to see my yeses, my noes, my pros, my cons from watching them. And that's where it all kind of stemmed from for me. Everything about me starts in my house. Mm -hmm. Everything. No, nothing starts outside. It starts inside my home of where I learned everything, absolutely everything. And to this very day, it's still the same. I, that that passion you had, that started in the house. Starting the house. I, mean, I, said, I always loved your passion. One of the most things I love about you is your passion. <laughs> but you know, in this game, and and you know, if if you are not already the man, sometimes your passion can get rubbed off on the mm -hmm. wrong way on the coach or player mm -hmm. or in that. How was that to to take your passion? And for, to show it to other people and have coaches and teammates to not be offensive to it yeah. or, or, or scared of it, to embrace it, you being on the team and seeing what you do. Yeah, that's, that's, that was really hard. That was really hard because a lot of times being as passionate as I am about what I do, some coaches thought I was trying to take over, and that wasn't <laughs> the deal. Mm -hmm. uh, some players thought I was being a little too harsh and too rough. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the deal. It was me showing what I feel. I believe motivation is in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And what I bring, I thought I wanted to throw it in the atmosphere. I wanted people to feel what I'm feeling. And mm -hmm. the only way you could feel it is for it to exude from me. And it started to exude from me. They saw it as, I want you to be best you. I want you to be the best you. I don't want anything but you to be the best you. Because I'm going to be the best me. <laughs> I'm going to be the best me out here. I don't give a damn if nobody likes it. Yeah. I'm going to be the best me. But I wanted them to see every single day that I come out here, what I'm bringing, I'm bringing to excite you. I'm bringing to excite you for you to know whatever in your day that happened, don't worry about it. I got you. Let I me, got you. Let me ask you this. Like, when I see you, I see a leader. I see somebody that can lead the team, somebody I can follow behind, and you're going to always put me in the best position possible. Yeah. When did you know, like, man, every team I play on, I don't care if it's the YMCA League, I don't care if it's the WNBA mm -hmm. Championship, I don't care if it's with the fellas, I got to be the leader yeah. every single time. They look to me yeah. to be the leader mm -hmm. every single time. When did you, you you accept that role and know that, oh, I can't do nothing but be a leader everywhere I go? You know what happens is when you're a leader, you on a, like you're on an island by yourself. Yeah. You like there, it's like it's a lonely place to be sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I felt that a lot. I felt that a lot. Like I don't need anyone to motivate me. I know how to motivate myself. Mm -hmm but I knew they needed me, the leadership, for them to, to go every day because I wanted to ignite you. I wanted to push you. I wanted you to think whatever that challenge was before you that you could conquer, you could get through a brick wall and never get hurt. But it always happened for me in high school, to college, to my professional settings. It always happened. But I never just wanted it to be given to me. I wanted to earn it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to earn that leadership. I wanted mm -hmm. them to know every day that I come in here, I'm playing hard for you, not for me. Yeah. I'm playing hard for you. Tell and me, it, they followed it. Tell me, you say your coach, your high school coach was tough on you. He yeah. kicked you off the team and you would get disciplined. How do you go from 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 being kicked off the team and you, you having to be disciplined to, to being the leader of the team mm -hmm. and valedictorian of your high school <laughs> class? Like, that don't sound like somebody that got kicked off a team mm -hmm. and had disciplinary problems and then you go to be the valedictorian. It all starts at home. It all starts at home. So when I, when I did what I did to be kicked off the team, now um, it's, it's almost like it's a reflection of my upbringing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't want that. I didn't want that. So it, it kind of embarrassed me. Yeah. I actually humiliated myself, no one else. Mm -hmm. I humiliated myself, but I didn't want to do that to my home. Because mm -hmm. where I'm from, 
my my upbringing was very difficult, very, very difficult. I didn't have like most people think. You know, they always look at the book. They never want to open it and see what your yeah. heck you went mm -hmm. through. I went through a very hard time as a family to make it. You know, people talk about waking up and trying to do their homework, wondering if the lights are going to be on, finding out six kids got to get something to eat, six yeah. kids got to have clothes on their backs. Mm -hmm. All of that was happening. But in our house, we had love, and I was not going to mess up what my father and my mother was teaching. And I did. At that point, I did. So it was embarrassing. It was something I said I would never, ever do again. And I knew from that point that when that happened to me, there was something different that had to change. Mm -hmm. And I changed it. I changed it for the good of myself and for the girls that, that I had to lead. Yeah, I can I can di directly relate to that because like people ask me, how did you stay out of you come from Chicago? I say, man, listen, it wasn't no gang, it wasn't no police, it wasn't no teacher, it wasn't <laughs> nobody that was gonna whoop my ass like my daddy was if I messed up. <laughs> and that fear with what I had with my pop, yeah. that was stronger than anything that any outside yeah. force could ever do to me. That was more motivation. Like you say, not to let my family down and try and yeah. make my family yeah. look bad. That meant more to me than anything. Thing. Nothing else. Like those two things. Like, all right, number one, your pops gonna whoop your ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like number yeah. two, like you don't want, you know what I'm saying? That ain't what we about, and you don't want to put it out there like we no. like that. No. So absolutely. Could it could it have been anybody else but Louisiana Tech? Or it, it was Tech was the squad that I wanted to be with. I wasn't highly recruited. Mm. Yeah. I wasn't highly recruited at all, and that was motivation for me. Mm -hmm. Now, who was, was the number one player when you was when you was coming out? You remember? Um uh Kim Mulkey was known. Mark. Worldwide, but Cheryl Miller was the number one thing yeah, kicking at that Miller's time, you know, yeah. and she was, <laughs> okay. she was the girl, yeah. right? Bottom line, let's, <laughs> right. let, let's just say it for what it really is. Yeah. Um, and I have a great deal of respect for her and what she brought to the women's game to grow it the way that she did. Uh, but at the time, Louisiana Tech was really strong on me. Louisiana Tech and the University of Texas, mm -hmm. basically it. And it was a decision for me to make University of Texas a little bit too far. Mm -hmm. University of Texas a little bit too big. Mm -hmm. I get to Louisiana Tech and I was like, mm, it's my speed. Mm -hmm. It's my speed. I like it here. And I love the tradition. Mm -hmm. I love the tradition and the work that they put in to be great players, but most importantly, great people. You got Kim Mokley there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's one of them highly recruited players. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's one of the top players. She's in the yeah. position that you want to play and you want to be in. Yeah. Like, how was that to, to, to be behind her yeah. and to take her spot? Like, how was that? Well, this is the way it was. 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 Kim had just left. That was her senior year. Oh, okay. She had recruited me to bring me on as well as Carl Malone. Carl okay. Malone brought me into Louisiana Tech. Carl Malone, okay. And when she left, I came in as the next point guard. And actually, I was the first black point guard at Louisiana Tech. Wow. And that was tough right you there. Replace mm -hmm. Now I got to try to come in and do what she in. did for yeah. four years. She and took him to the final four. Took him to the final four. And when I tell you she was very good at what she does, yeah. she's very good. And I was like, I can't. I can't carry your shoes. I don't want to carry your shoes. I want to bring my own. Mm -hmm. And she was my coach. She was my coach, guard coach, while I was there at Louisiana Tech for four years. And I didn't want to carry her shoes. I can't. I don't want to. I want to carry my own. I want to bring my own shoes. Mm -hmm. I want somebody now to see what these are like. I have these shoes I'm about to be at Louisiana Tech. <laughs> when you get there, how, tell me about the process of, like like you say, it's already tough. You, yeah. You're, you're the first black point guard. Yeah. You're placing Kim. She's still there helping yeah. coach you. So it's kind of that hovering over you. How was that adjustment for you? How did you attack that? It was easy. It was easy because she was all there for me. Mm -hmm. She was there for me. She wanted me to break whatever record she had out there. She wanted me That's to be awesome. known even better than her. She mm -hmm. wanted that. So she gave me everything she had. I asked her one day just to play. I just want to play against you one time. <laughs> I one time. And I was a little freshman. I, you know, I was arrogant. I want to play against you one time. Mm -hmm. and she's like, I'm coming one time. You know, and she's just as tough and rough. I said, mm -hmm. I'm coming one time. I said, all right, they're going to have the damn oxygen over here for you because I'm running the hell out of you because I know you're in shape. <laughs> she put those shoes on. It was different. Mm -hmm. It was different. I was like, yeah, this girl different. She she's different. Play. The way that she conduct the show and how she got everybody involved, her vision. She was she was different, so she really made it difficult for me to be able to defend. But it taught me how. It taught me what I needed to do at this that level. Thirty two and two yeah. championship seed. Yeah. Like you lost two games, but like how was that to kind of yeah. finish it all? How was that season? Just take us through that season. Yeah. The ups and downs, the around and then the click. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because when you have two losses and you had thirty two wins, you posed the one them two games. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how was that the up and down and around on that season, then finally winning the national championship? That freaking year was crazy because it's my senior year and 
I, I felt like coach was playing with me, you know, playing with time, you're playing with everything right now. And I'm trying, we're trying to win this dang thing. And I got to be the best version of myself to help this team win. Uh, and then we go into a game and we lose a game. He said, I'd have had you on the bench if we, if we were to play against this team again, win, lose, or draw. You know, piss me off to another level, okay? You don't piss me off to another level. We play again. We play again. It's on. Well, you didn't start me again. You didn't start me again. So I was third point guard coming off the bench. Should have never done that. Mm. So he had to call my name to win this game because I know he doesn't want to lose this game against Pepperdine. Never forget, mm -hmm. you can't lose this game. You can't. So when he did call my name, I only got two minutes, you guys, two minutes. Probably the best two minutes of my life. <laughs> Straight Probably up. Probably the best two minutes of my life. But lessons <laughs> you learn from so many things that happened. And that 32-2 to two season that we had, we got our butts kicked the year before, and we supposed to have been champions that year, Tennessee. That's what I was going to ask. Tennessee how how did that impact you losing it, the past that's what got Tennessee? Us. And that's what brought us into the season right. is knowing we done got our butts whipped. We should have won. I mean, they would had us in this big magazine, bells of the balls, you know, mm -hmm. everything, and we get beat. Right. And we get beat. You know, so it's like, nah, no, not this time. This is the last straw that I get. No, not this Winning time. This we time. all had that, that attitude of not this time. And every time we stepped on the floor, it was not this time. And when we did lose, it was more of learning lesson. Mm -hmm. More than, damn, we lost. Learning lesson. Learning lesson. And we would take it into the next game and be prepared to, for the championship. We were getting our butts whipping the championship game. Yeah. yeah, what was the halftime yeah, like? Ruthie Bolton. Ruthie Bolton. It was Ruthie Bolton. <laughs> Ruthie Bolton was tearing us up. And, of course, who was defending her? Me. <laughs> I was. And she had 14, 16 at half. And Coach Barmer, of course, I was the only name spoken to at half. You, you defending her. That's why we losing. You're defending. Oh, ignited me. I said she won't get another bucket. She won't get another bucket. To this day, Ruthie said, "Damn, I didn't get another bucket. <laughs> not another bucket." Hey, but not only that, you, 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 you knocked down the free throws and sealed the deal. Had to seal it. Had to seal it. Put it on <laughs> your girl. It. Put it on me. It Put it on me. I want it. To win a championship there, yeah. you know, like to win a championship at Louisiana Tech. How was that? Like, cause you know. They expect all of these teams from the bigger schools and the, the scholarships yeah. where they get all the yeah. top 10 players and all this stuff. Yeah. And Louisiana Tech making noise every year. <laughs> like, it, it was due to our coach. We, were, we weren't even in a conference. Mm -hmm. We were an independent school. So he mm -hmm. wanted to go to everybody's house and beat you. If you right. got a winning streak going, he, he scheduled it. That's how my high school was. We're going to schedule you <laughs> at your home. He wanted to break every winning streak there was out there. And that was big for us, you know, competition, knowing how to compete, you know, being ready to pay the price, that hard work that, pay, that, that pays off for you. So that's what it was for me about at Louisiana Tech, and that was key for me being a part of that university. Uh, let's talk about uh, them Pat Summit teams. Mm -hmm. the, you know, uh, we always heard Pat Summit always had our teams prepared, yeah. ready to play. Uh, what was them days like of going against the great Pat Summit and, and seeing how our teams excelled? Yeah. After playing them Louisiana Tech teams and, she was and stuff just like getting that. started. And then yeah. there was some knockdown drag outs because they were well coached and organized, structured team. Um, and they were some big women. You know, we played against them like, <laughs> man, these some corn fed chicks. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were big, but they were so good. And I had some great friends that played with those teams, but they would always talk about her preparation and her expectations. But when I had a chance to talk to her, she said, those are not expectations. Uh, and when I started coaching, she said, you better demand it. Mm. The expectations are already there. Expectations from you, expectations from them. But you have to demand the expectation. Mm -hmm. So she said, be a coach of demands. And mm. she was a coach of demands, and you could tell. I mean, because if you look across the league, so many Tennessee yeah. women have played. So many women from Tennessee have played in the USA Olympic teams mm -hmm. and what they're doing in the coaching field. Uh, she left her mark in an incredible way, not only with her players, but even those who had opportunity to coach with her. Mm -hmm. uh, look what they're doing. And whenever it's mentioned, you know, we're, we, we back Pat, you know, and uh, she's just an amazing person that has done so much for women's basketball. But not only there did she stop, it was basketball, period. There was mm -hmm. a respect factor for who she was as a coach across the basketball world. Yeah, but that's the thing that stuck with you from her. It's a demand. That's what's up. How was it coaching at your alma mater? That was uh, that was interesting. That was <laughs> that was interesting because you know when you leave and you you your your life has taken another turn, a whole mm -hmm. another different turn. And I was actually coaching uh, men at the time. I was a head coach. My first head coaching job was in the ABA, right? Uh, and it was Elton Brand's that. team. Yeah. I was yeah. with the Westchester Phantoms. Mm -hmm. That was my first head coaching job. 
And I was actually coaching them. And Carl Malone, once again, calls and <laughs> says, hey, you need to come home. You need to come home. I was like, home? I'm, I am home. I'm in New York. What do you mean? Yeah. He said, we want you to come back. And I said, I'll come back for one year. I'll come mm-hmm. back for one year, no problem. I went with a bag, you guys. I went with a bag. Went with a bag. And unfortunately, like seven games left in the season, uh, they they released the head coach. And I was the associate head coach. So I was like, nah, this ain't happening to me. I wasn't <laughs> playing on staying. This is not happening. And they named me interim head coach. And um, I started to like it. I started to like it. And I, I – um, it was great when you play for a university and you move on as a young kid. You, you kind of got to know yourself as a, as, a, as a college player. You kind of understand yourself. But then to come back after so many years, for them to want you back, that's probably one of the best feelings for me, more so than when I went as an 18-year-old. But it was even more so when they called me back and asked me to lead mm-hmm. this team. And unfortunately, you know, when things happen and it doesn't happen the way they want it to happen, then you're removed. Mm-hmm. It can become uh, difficult mm-hmm. and, and, and painful and hurtful because there goes separation for, prep, for preparation for something different. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was difficult when that happened to me because it's my freaking university. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was how it happened more so than it happening. It was how it happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, that story is to be told soon, but it was just how it happened it, mm-hmm. for me because there's love and always will be love for my university. That's where things started for me. And I'll always be respectful and professional in that setting. And it seemed like Carl Malone was a big influence in yeah. a lot of your career and life just being from Louisiana. Yeah. Texas. He, he's an amazing guy. You know, yeah. he, he, as a as a high school kid trying to find what school I wanted to go to, he was like, Louisiana Tech is the place to be. Yeah. So I uh, really enjoyed my visit. I enjoyed what they were all about. And I knew that was the place for me. He was helpful in that. Mm. He was extremely helpful in that. And then I watched his career all these, the time that he played, and he watched mine. It was really crazy. He went from Utah to L.A. I yeah. went from New York to L.A. LA. <laughs> it was really, I was like, this ain't even happening with the both of us. Yeah. But we remained close the entire time. Hall like of Famers together. He's a freaking Hall of Famer, and yeah. and he's a wonderful guy, doing the great things man. there in, yeah, in Ruston, man. Louisiana, by changing the school, really doing things yeah. to better our university and better things for the young people who are there. Uh, he was just instrumental in me being there at Louisiana Tech and having my back. When you came out, there, there wasn't no WNBA. No. You know, uh, which I always say this all the time. The USA women's basketball team always put the their best foot forward because mm-hmm. they have the team of the decade, the team. Like, it, it always be just so much yeah. power with them. To play with the USA team, you know, mm-hmm. now you're on the USA team, now you playing with the top girls yeah. and you seeing who's who and – Y'all going overseas to win that. That was y'all championship then because mm-hmm. y'all didn't have no WNBA. Right. How was them to see your period, see the people, and see the, the people that respect you to be yeah. like, nah, we need Teresa yeah. Westspoon on this team yeah. with everybody else that we naming, and you being a leader on that team too. Yeah. Like, yeah. how was that for you? That was crazy. Win a gold medal. Super crazy because that was, and I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a age myself right quick. I was in 88, my first Olympic game uh, they ever played. But I played on USA teams leading to that. Because, yeah. you know, you really kind of show yourself to try to yeah. get a part of Olympic team. And then 92, I played on the 88 and 92 Olympic team. Uh, but the 88 one was incredible because I was I was a kid who was told I would never be great at playing the game of basketball. Mm. I was and told by a coach I would never be great playing the game of basketball. So to have that medal and to be able to say I was part mm. of the 12 best to mm. do this, it was incredible. And to play with the girls I had an opportunity to play with was Simply amazing. You're talking about great practices. Mm. There was some amazing yeah, we've practice. We've been hearing the about y'all practices. The <laughs> matchups, you know. They always talk about practice is fun. No, the hell it's not. Practice so is hard. Y'all used to go edit. Practice is hard. It's hard. I uh, kill each other. <laughs> Straight kill each other. So game time is going to be easy. Right. Yeah. Practice was harder than the game, and it's supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, it was unreal, the, the talent level. And it's to be a part of something like that, to know how easy the game is going to be now yeah. from every angle, whether it's the right. one, two, three, four, to five, and then the bench coming off. Everybody. The best bench in the world, the bench could have been another Olympic team. Right. That's another whole other starting five. Whole another starting five. <laughs> That's just how great it was to be able to play with those ladies. It was it was three te- three USA teams. Well, we, we can add the 88 USA team. It's four USA teams. Which out of the four, you feel is the best USA team? The best USA team that I played on? Women's USA team. 92. I knew she And we did not win. We did not win. We we were a part of the 
the uh, dream team, you know, yeah. the mm-hmm. dream team in yeah. 92. Yeah. We were freaking dream team too, and yeah. we did not win. But I still believe that we were the best assembled USA team, period. Mm-hmm. Now, someone else is probably going to say something differently, but we were by far the best assembled USA team in 92 and did not win. And that that doesn't settle with us because, you know, everyone's like, yeah, but you got a medal. You got a bronze medal. Many people can't say that. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't go there for a bronze yeah, medal. Straight up. So we, we went USA, there for just eyeballs. So, you know, <laughs> so that 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 bothers us a lot. Mm. But that was one of the best ever assembled. Ever. This, this, we didn't heard a lot of stories. We didn't interviewed a lot of women. We didn't heard a lot of overseas stories, yeah. places they didn't sure. been. And some of these, some of these players then then found new life, new living, mm. you know, a new way of living, yeah. a new, you know, new peace. By getting the opportunity to go overseas, one of the things I, when I go overseas is so much different than the United mm-hmm. States. Yeah, where I'm, I'm scared to live over there because I'm like, man, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's so peaceful. Yeah. you know, yeah. they live so different than we live. But mm-hmm. can you tell us some of the stories and some of the places that you've been to overseas, and just you know, yeah. some of the funny stories that you didn't had over there. Yeah. That. I played in Italy my first seven years, and then I had uh, an opportunity to play in Russia, mm-hmm. uh, which no one has ever played over there. In no no American has ever played in their league, period. And um, I went over with Medina Dixon, and that was one of the best experiences, is to play on a Russian team, and it was the Central Sports Club of Army. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you know, you know you're supposed to say that at that yeah. time because of they had just transitioned from – communism to capitalism Mm -hmm. and here we are over there trying to make a living and make a life for ourselves but the most important thing when you're there and I know people think I'm scared to do this scared to do that but you have to de-americanize yourself Mm -hmm. and if you de-americanize yourself and start to live the way that they live there goes the respect factor that they see okay I respect them they like to live how we live they're not trying to be that American and and feel like they're better. American bougie. Yeah, so you (laughs) de-Americanize yourself and live like them. I did everything Russians would do. Mm -hmm. I even dressed like a Russian. Mm -hmm. I did everything they would do. I had to learn who was mafia because (laughs) Medina Dixon and I, we weren't weren't taking the crap from nobody because we're learning what's happening there because we were the first two black Americans to ever play and we're not supposed to be leaving home Mm -hmm. until everyone knew that we were playing for Central Sport Club of Army. But we wanted to get out at Leningradsky to see what was happening. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we didn't know Mafia drives the Mercedes and how they look. Right. And we're headed to the gym, trying to get to the gym, get to practice on time. And they go by us. And, you know, the snow is everywhere. And whoosh, blow all that crap up on us. We were like, what the? So we did the <laughs> finger, yeah. hit them with the finger, like. They didn't. <laughs> so them suckers didn't turn that thing around <laughs> coming after us. We were oh, shit. So we ran, we got into the building. We get into the building. And, uh. Of course, they were like, what's, what's going on? It's like, no, these, these people came back because of what happened. We flipped them off, and they came back after us. Those people came in the door. Well, oh, shit, that's them. <laughs> <laughs> they came in the door, so we were like, they were like, if you ever see them with this cap on and driving a Mercedes and with these jackets on, they're with us. I was like, oh, God. We thought it was over for us at that point because we, we didn't know. We were just in another country. You know, yeah. you're putting this mess up on us. Come on, on our nice clothes. So of course we were ticked off. But yeah. that was a that was a lesson for us right there of knowing who was who. Mm, that's knowing a, who was who. I think Russia is the spot because we heard from place. Sue Bird that she played for a spy. A <laughs> Russian spy. Right, right. Right. Yeah, yeah, I remember. To hear that you was the first to go over there. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 yeah. That's, yeah. That's, so many you things there. happened. Did you, when you were in Italy, did you play against anybody else that ended up being in the WNBA? Uh, yeah, I played uh, the majority of us. Mm. Majority of us ended up. Yeah, everybody I played against in Italy or in Russia ended up playing in the league, and a couple of the Russian girls mm. ended up playing again, and one Italian that I played against that, that, that came into the league. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. How, how how was the competition compared, like, as far as, like, the first year? I mean, I know the players were probably at a higher level, but mm-hmm. this was the first year of the WNBA, so, you know, everybody was getting used to it. Was it when you came from overseas, was it a little more uptick because it had been going for a longer time? Yeah, see, I think the thing that was important for us is – we couldn't say anything but great things about playing overseas because it kept us ready. It kept us ready in case this did come into existence. Right. And when it did, we were ready to roll. Of course, we were 
playing at a very high level. And playing in Russia, these were some of the best girls to do it in Russia. And they were Olympians too. Mm -hmm. We were playing against some Olympians and playing with some Olympians who had just beat us in 92. Mm -hmm. So of course there was some knockdown drag outs in practice because we still ticked off from yeah. losing to them. Right. So we, we going at it in practice as well. But we were ready because of playing overseas. And that's how mm -hmm. we got into the league. We were still amped up. Bodies still looked good. We were still in great shape. And we were ready to roll. I always had a problem with the women going overseas. Yeah. Like, I was just, that was just always just a big yeah. problem to me. It's like, man, we got, they got to, I ain't care about the men. Yeah. You know, you men, you can yeah. go anywhere. But I always had, had a problem with just, you know, they ain't making enough money over here. Yep. They got to go all the way overseas to, you know, have another season yep. and all that stuff. I always hated that and part we of did it. too. <laughs> <laughs> and we did too, but that's that's what we had to do to continue to play a game that we loved. Yeah. We had to go overseas and we were everywhere, every country, you name it. Mm. Our girls were out there. Where was you at when you heard there was going to be a WNBA? <laughs> and what was, was that I, like? Like I like I was I was in France, I never forget. Yeah. Sitting in France playing overseas. Of course, this is right. what we had. Yeah. I was over there playing and when they called and said that I would be allocated to play in New York, I was like this can't be happening. <laughs> this cannot be happening. We've been playing overseas all these years. All and, these years. And at first they told me I would be playing in Houston. Yeah. I would be playing in Houston because I'm I'm from Texas. So they right. wanted to have uh, you know, a lot of people local. play close local yeah. people to bring butts in the seats. Uh, and when they called and said, Well, you'll be playing in New York for about two seconds, I was like, damn. New York? Oh, that's my style. Right. That's my flow. And to be playing there, man, to play in that place and then for the WNBA to come into existence due to what our 96 Olympic team did. That's yeah. really yeah. what happened. Our 96 Olympic team just showed the world. Showed the world. Hey, you can't miss this style of play. Yeah. So we belong in America playing this game and not having to go overseas to continue to play. That that liberty and that Sparks game, that yeah. first game, the world is watching, all the cameras, all the star power. Like, tell us about just that game, the process, yeah. the whole yeah. thing. Because look at where the, where the league is now, and that was that first game, and you was part of that. Just tell us yeah. about that game. We were scared. That's, that's <laughs> Everybody was scared. No, no. That's what Lisa Leslie said. She we're didn't not know what was going on. I thought we were going to be in practice jerseys. She was like, what's, what's going on? It was a real deal for us. It, yeah. we, we were scared. Oh, we were scared. I mean, I can remember calling home as we getting on the bus. Time to get on the bus. I'm calling my family and say, hey, you guys got to tune in. I say, I'm so freaking nervous. I'm so nervous. I don't even know what to do. We get on the bus and we're driving up to the forum. That's when nerves really hit me. I'm like, man, this is really real. So it's magic, magic it, was that? That, Yeah, yeah, that's them. That's them. Man, we're about to be a part of the magic time, the show time. Yeah. And to be a part of it, man, it was crazy. It was really crazy then to walk out to see the people really there to watch us play. Because we were told, ah, this is a summer league team. You're not going to get more than 5,000 people to watch. But we knew if you give us a chance to play, oh, you coming. You're coming because we're an exciting group of girls to watch play the game of basketball. Yeah. And once we got that opportunity, we just took full advantage of it because we understood the magnitude of that one game, that first game. We understood the magnitude of being on TV and people watching us. We knew it had, we had to put on a show. Tell me, tell me how was it when you like you played that first game was in the forum, but once you got to New York yeah. and you got to, you got a to game play in front brother. of those fans and you got to cause you are one of the most beloved New York athletes, period. Ever. Like in the whole, <laughs> you know, I played there and like you still was being talked about. So, you know, I, I know what you the relationship you got with those fans. And just tell me how it was when you first got to get there and start seeing like, oh, wait a minute. They like me. They, 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 yeah. and then like when they really get a load of me, it's going to be over with. Like, how was that for you when you started to see and, and see how the fans fell in love with you and, yeah. and, and vice versa? It was a real special moment for me because Rebecca Lobo comes up to me after the first game. And the first game, of course, was in the forum. And then we're getting ready to play at home. She said, this is your team. This is mm. your team. That was enough for me. That was enough for me. And I was already excited to be ready to play in Madison Square Garden, the most famous arena in the world. Right. Now, this is actually our home. Mm -hmm. This is where we play, and we got to protect this floor. I was ready to give the people every single piece of energy I had because we knew what basketball meant to this place. This is the Mecca. This is the Mecca, and we get a chance to play. And, man, you walked out, and we were like, they said 5,000 people? <laughs> this place is full. It's packed. Mm -hmm. It's showtime. So we got in our locker room. Everybody's like, I said, you guys are ready to go? This is our time. They came to see us. No need to be afraid. No need to be afraid. Let's go. 
Mm-hmm. So we were ready. We were ready to play because we got the feel when we went to the forum. Mm-hmm. We got a feel for it. Of course, going to the garden is a little bit different, but we already got that feel. We mm-hmm. had the feel for it. We knew we were at home and people were there to watch us. Just to see what they created that season. Like, you know, like they, they started the yeah. league. They had this draft. Jerseys. Uh, the selling. jerseys. Yep. Y'all in the big arenas. I know it can't be, you know, the best thing, but just to start off, how was the, just that first season to see the effort of like, no, nah, we trying to really do a WNBA mm-hmm. and it's supposed to be here forever. Like the, yeah. the campaigns that you see on TV, the commercials. Yeah. Yeah. When they start doing the commercials got- and everything. How was that just that whole year of that? Yeah, that's when you knew it was big. It's yeah. when you saw all the commercials on TV. You know, they were really promoting us. You know, it wasn't something that is there's a league, but nobody ever recognized what we were doing or saw what we were doing or it was televised to see what we were doing. That's when you knew it was big, when all the commercials were out or before season started, you're out making sure the commercials are done. They had certain players that they would bring in and do the commercials, and uh, that was big for us to have that. And when we got that, we knew, okay, this thing is real. It, that was That's when we knew it was real is the commercials were out. Yeah. Was there a moment for you where you were like, now I'm in New York, I'm playing in WNBA, but like you had previously played eight years in mm-hmm. Italy, two years mm-hmm. in Russia. Was there a point where it was like, I can't believe that this is happening? Like I'm like you know what I'm saying you were becoming a superstar in in America you yeah. know what I'm saying people your own people getting to see you, your family can see you on TV yeah. they can travel to come see you without having to get passports and all that like how right. were those all of those changes for you and realizing like he said what they had put together and it's like now yeah. after all of these years of me putting in this work overseas and doing it, it's it's a home for me here in my own country how did that feel Yeah, I think people don't realize or they only see what you do on the floor. But those nights of going home <laughs> after a game and you go home and you're, 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 your body's aching and you're feeling a certain way. But, I mean, there were many a nights to sit down and think that this is what we're doing now and people are really accepting us. Many a night's tears were flowing because it was the best feeling to know that we're finally being recognized at home. We're not overseas. We're not just having to, to look forward to being an Olympian where only 12 people get that. We have thousands and thousands yeah. of girls who can play this game and people need to see the talent. Yeah. And so that was plenty nice. The tears were just rolling. But we also, for me, I was also thinking that, boy, I got a job to do. I got yeah. a huge job to do because there's other girls who are dreaming just like I did. I can't fail them. So that was on my mind too. I mean, everybody's like, that was on, yes. <laughs> it was on my freaking mind because... I want them to experience this. This is this is awesome. But as you experience it, think of the next person. Think of the next person so this thing can continue to grow yeah, girl. and get bigger and bigger. Yeah. They back to back defensive player of the year at Lock them up. At, Lock up. At the point though. Like you don't team really team. see a lot of points getting the defensive player of the year GP. award and <laughs> straight up and <laughs> so forth. How was uh how was that to just really be recognized? On a level, like, I know you go overseas. Yeah. And you, you win scoring titles. You be the defensive player. You win a championship. But yeah. to get recognized in the United States at that time for a women's basketball player yeah. on the top level, how was that for you? It's really crazy. I knew. I knew that I was the best defensive player, period. Mm-hmm. I knew it. And that happened for me at Louisiana Tech my first year. Very first year, very first practice. Coming out of high school, you're scoring 25, 30 points with no problem. Because uh, everyone to say, ah, oh, she couldn't score the ball. It's a sacrifice I made. Mm-hmm. I made a sacrifice to be the best defender possible. Coach Balmore said, if you want to play on my team, you're going to defend. You play some D. And it clicked. It clicked. I went right after the best offensive player there was on the team you. at that time. I'm going right after her. I got you. I'm going right after her. <laughs> I want to show them I can lock up. I can, I can start it from the point guard position. And you guys were just talking about GP. They always called him the glove. They Big called glove. me the little mitten. Hey. <laughs> they called me the little mitten. <laughs> Come on, man, that's real cold. The little one, at least call me a mitten. Don't put yeah. little on it. But defense, is the, the, that's me. That's me. I look forward to defending the best. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to dream me. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is one thing that I've like always, from the first time I've seen you play, and I believe it was the 92 Olympics, your passion. Your energy, you know what I'm saying? The, the the what you bring to the game. Like I can definitely remember, like, yo, and then even when you start coaching, and I, I I've seen a clip of something like, dude, like I run through a wall for it. Like that's I want I want that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, where do you think 
Like that's one of the biggest things I've always since seeing you play. I I love and I admire and I and I was drawn to like if like whenever I had teammates like that, they turned me up to another mm -hmm. level. Like I know I was a person that brought that, but like if I ever had somebody else with me that brought how you brought that energy, where do you think you 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 got that from and where did that come from? Because that's like you have the type of passion and energy that's so infectious and and it it it, it goes throughout the whole team. Everybody's seen it, whether you were playing, coaching, or whatever. Like, where do you think you developed that from? That drive to come out the hole. Mm -hmm. That drive to come out of the hole of where I came from. Mm -hmm. um, I was told that I, I wouldn't be. I was told I would not be. So, I mean, even to this day, you'll see the growl on my face. It, it right. brings it out of me. Mm -hmm. So when it, when you, you tell me what I cannot do, I'm going to tell you, you can put me with the wolves and watch me come out and they go, I'm going to be the leading them. <laughs> It's just my attitude. It's my approach. It's a mentality. See, you gotta have it. Saying. I want to hoop right now. You I gotta have it, it. And, and and that's what I want you to feel. That's what when you we walk out there. We walk out there together. Yeah, it's coming that. out of me. It's coming out of me. And right now, you're bringing it out of me. Right now, <laughs> you're bringing this shit out of me right now. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm, I'm actually sitting there holding my hand. I'm sitting on my hand. I'm telling you, and I'm I'm the energy. Is, I'm feeling it. That's why I'm yeah. saying like this is this is necessary. So what, so what are we gonna do? We gonna sit on our gift? We gonna sit on our gift? We gonna sit on our gift and just be like, eh, that's not me. That's not me. And the one thing that I don't do is I don't live between the hand claps of people. Right. I ain't living in between your hand claps. If I'm waiting on you to clap for me, Q, I'll never get to where I'm gonna be because you might not clap, <laughs> but I'm waiting on your clap. Mm -hmm. I don't live between that. I don't let anyone tell me who I am or what I can do. I don't let anyone cover, restrict, or suffer my gift. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. So I can't live between the hand claps of people. Well, let's, who, who, who gave you? Like I, 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 the passion is in you and and all that, but who gave you the structure of being yeah. a point guard? The, the 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 rules of being a point guard, yeah. the the responsibilities of being a point guard that people, a regular casual fan, don't know. They don't know you need to yeah. set that person up. They don't know I need to get so and so the ball. Mm -hmm. They don't know oh so and so ain't had a couple of shots. Let me get her a three. Who taught you the structure of being a point guard? I studied. You studied. I studied. I studied Who my are some of the people that you studied, that you've seen? It's crazy. I studied Magic Isaiah. I studied those guys like mm. nobody's business because they Girl, wanted to get people OGZ. involved. Mm -hmm. They wanted to get people involved. So I wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. I wanted everybody to be, I wanted everybody to be the best version of themselves. And I was willing to sacrifice my own game uh, for the good of the team. I believed in that. So I watched them and I studied everybody of of and then studying my own personnel. I had to study my own personnel because I need to know, do you, you have a high pocket, you got a low pocket, you got a mid pocket, whatever your pocket is, I had to know that and receive and get the ball to you on time, on target. That's just you, stuff you know, on time, on target. But I also had to be able to conduct the show mm -hmm. and to conduct the show in the right way. Are we running? Are we running? There's nothing. Then I set up and then we show what we can do offensively with execution. There's a lot that goes in execution. Everybody just thinks it's, this is the play we're running. Right. You can run plays all you want. Many teams can run plays, but can you execute? execute. It's a total difference in yeah. execution and running a play. So much is involved in So I had to be the one who understood one, two, three, four, and the five yeah, the to pace. be able to get you. I had the to be pace. able to understand the, the, it. So 98, 99, mm -hmm. the Liberty get to the WNBA finals. Tell me what you feeling then. Like, y'all, you in the Mecca and 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 you lead them to the to the to the big show. I Against you, your Houston, Houston kind. <laughs> Still salty. <laughs> Still salty. Uh, but they were they were so good. You had to be almost flawless. You had to, you had to yeah. be flawless to beat them. And uh, you, I give them a lot of credit because they were so good and they, they brought a lot out of you every time you played against them. Uh, but 99, that was an incredible series, period. Uh, we had the first game at home and then the second was on their floor and then the third one was on their floor. Um, but we, if we would have gotten the first one, they were in trouble. Yeah, they were in trouble. We we were close to getting that first one. Of course, Cynthia Cooper goes off and kind of gets them over the hump and gets the first one. But we felt like we can still go in and still won at their place. We t we talked to Tina, <laughs> and <laughs> Tina said like, "Yeah, I just I just told Cynthia and Cheryl like, make sure you know who you guard." And she said <laughs> when she seen your face. When you grab the ball out of bounds, like she knew you was going to make that shot. Can you, can you take us through that yeah. process? Because when, when you really look over the clip, all the comments players are celebrating. Mm -hmm. All your players, is aside the person who took the ball out and you, all the rest of your players, like, yeah, this yep. is over. Yeah. And 
you see, you take the ball out, get you the ball, and it seemed like you're the only one that's still playing the game all the way down to double zero. Like, I'm, I'm not stopping to that last horn. Goes yeah, out. how was that? Can you explain that play for us? <laughs> Crystal Robinson kind of kept shot. us in. Chris yeah. Robinson kept us in, knocking down threes and keeping us yeah. in, keeping it going. And, of course, Tina makes a, an incredible shot and gets them over the hump, and then the confetti goes down. <laughs> but there's time on the clock, and I was just I was just screaming at Kim Hampton, throw it, throw it. Nobody was around me. Yeah. Nobody. I was like, oh, throw it. When she got it to me, nobody was there, and I was able to heave it. Yeah. Tina was just a tad bit late. Yeah. And when it went in, I mean, the look on their face, I told him that's that's joy for me, yeah. is to see the look on your face. You know, change that confetti. Pick that shit yeah. up. Pick it up. Wait another day. Pick it up. Change your locker room because it ain't happening. No, change your locker no room. Ain't happening. <laughs> so I can still talk trash to him about that. Now but. what Now what? who put don't want this in your locker room? Just tell me. How was, how was that just, just the... Did you ever think that, like, man, how did they get them three players on the same team? Man, we all did. <laughs> like, we how did, did Houston they pull that They had a big all? three, but everyone they, forgot Tina about Tina is the number one player. Absolutely. And they got Cheryl Swoops and Cynthia Cooper on the same I, team. We, we, I don't know how it happened. It just, they got lucky. They got lucky, but it worked out for them. But no one talks about Janet Arcane. Dark Janet Dark yeah. Kane yeah. and Kill Perot. Yeah. They, yeah. they, they, they were unbelievable for they them. They kept the balance. They kept it them. balanced. They yeah. kept it balanced. And once we were focused in on these three... They, these two yeah. killed us. You look at the stats, she's like, well, damn, she had 20, she had 15 and yeah. 10 assists over 10 here. Assists, yeah. So it would kill you. You had to be flawless. Coming, Everybody had to be on point. Coming into the WNBA, you know, they, you've seen all these commercials and stuff on phone. They basically put the, the sparks to win a championship basically every year. Uh, the, the, the Liberty was like the, the mm -hmm. second team to that. But how was it to see the unfold of it? To see like how it actually turned out. A team from Houston did Nobody knew what was yeah. even going on. Like, yeah. Teen Thompson was number one pick, and mm -hmm. she won the first most popular number pick, and it wasn't because it's something she did. It's because people didn't know women's basketball. That's it. That's it. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, how was just to see how the how it actually unfolds? Because, I mean, Lisa Leslie told us that, you know, it took her a couple of years to really adjust to be like, yeah, this shit ain't really going nowhere. This is it. And this is finna start yeah. the legacies, the Hall of Fames, and, and everything from everybody's career. But them first couple of years, Houston kind of ran them off. But you know, just seeing mm -hmm. the, the, the rest of the league just kind of unfold. You're seeing stars from everywhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's really Griffin, parallel and, now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. It was really, if it wasn't, if it wasn't us, if it wasn't Houston, if it wasn't the Lake, uh, the, the Sparks, if it wasn't uh, even Phoenix at the in time. Phoenix, yeah. Phoenix yeah. was really big. Yeah. And Cleveland, you can't leave the Rockers out because yeah. they were they were our Achilles heels yeah. for the Liberty. They yeah. were our Achilles yeah. heel. They were so freaking good. Uh, but once you saw how parallel the league became, mm -hmm. uh, you knew then this thing is gonna this thing is gonna explode because mm -hmm. we only had eight teams. Now we have twelve, and we're almost sure it's gonna expand. It's gonna expand, and that's what you really want to see from the, seeing the things unfold. Watching it unfold and seeing how now each team you don't you don't have a clue who's gonna win, mm -hmm. even this upcoming season. You don't know who's gonna even do. this upcoming season. You're mm -hmm. looking at like boy, these people have done really well at bettering their teams mm -hmm. by going into the free agency and pulling it and really really done, they've really done a great job. So that it's gonna be so much more excitement by the way that they're putting the team, teams together. Yeah, to to see these uh, fast forward to now. Yeah, you know, you know, you started the first season, you see it now. The season I was these, pioneered. Yeah, these these players that then. That then came and made a lot of history, especially some of these young Simone Augustus, mm -hmm. the Maya Moores, mm -hmm. the the uh, Diana Wilson. Tarasi's, yeah. and you know the Asia yeah. Wilson, True seeing the, the big girls dunk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying. To see how this yeah. this this WNBA thing have evolved from the rules, the more benefits they got and everything. How mm -hmm. proud are you to see yeah. the direction and the future is going into? Yeah, and that that's what we talked about earlier was making sure that each person who put that uniform on for whatever team it was is for you to have not only a vision for your team, not only a vision for yourself, but a vision for the future. future. And that's exactly what they've done. They have mm -hmm. an incredible future. Mm -hmm. This this league is going to be even better. Yeah. I think the CBA, when they, they went in and, and went to the table and did a really good job with the CBA, mm -hmm. and that's only going to get better. Everything is progressional. Mm -hmm. You're going to have your, your, your trailblazers like ourselves and the pioneers who's going to start things. And then there's the in between, mm -hmm. and yep. then here you go now moving towards the future of it really growing, and that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna only get better, and these girls are not gonna have to go overseas to have to at ends to meet. Do you think a woman was gonna ever dunk in a WNBA game? Absolutely, absolutely. So you 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 felt like oh when they started this oh yeah we are gonna have 
women dunking in the yeah. minute. Give us a couple more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it, it was because we stayed so fundamentally sound. Yes. It wasn't that everybody didn't have the jumping ability. I mean, I mean, everybody doesn't don't, don't even think about Mawadi Mabika. Mawadi Mabika, even Michelle Edwards, who played mm -hmm. alongside with the with the Rockers. Their ability to jump was unreal, but we were all about the finger rolling and the layups and, and being deceptive see, to get I'm to the other side I'm of the rim. I'm going to say this because I say this. We've said this on here a lot of times, and people be like, oh, y'all capping up. Women's basketball players are light years ahead of the NBA with fundamentals mm -hmm. because – me and naturally, we got so many you different steps. Yeah, we can too. skip steps. We can yeah. skip steps and yeah. don't have to, we can cheat. We don't have to do this and that because yeah. I might just to go take off. Like, you remember Mari, he said he went to his first workout stats say They told him to do this, do this, go left and do He said, I looked at him and said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, I took two dribbles <laughs> and just took off and dunked. Yeah. And they were like, okay. Like, but like, yeah, yeah. like, and, yeah. and to the, to, y'all can't do that. So like, yeah. you see way more up and under step throughs with exactly. footwork and all this different stuff. I tell people like, they like, man, y'all be careful. I'm like, man, nobody, bro. You watch and you will yeah. see these ladies are are skilled and they 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 don't get to skip steps like we do. So they right. really have to A B C. They be having it. And when yeah. you be watching it, it be like, y'all get to do plays that they would literally call travel on NBA uh -huh. because we never make the move. We never do the extra little step through thing. You would see it on the Euro step, but like the step throughs that the ladies do when they in the post and they do the one two stuff, and you never see they call a travel instantly on the NBA dude. Like what was that? Like you never yeah. see it. I I uh you know as as basketball players we always want a nickname. We want somebody to call us something and all that stuff. Do you like teaspoon, just spoon, or was it another nickname that we haven't heard that people used to call you? Yeah, I was actually used to be called in, in college Rambo. Rambo. Uh, one of the coaches from the <laughs> from SMU, he called me Rambo. He said, "I said, why why you call me Rambo?" He said, I, "My damn player can't get the ball across half court. He won't even let her get the ball across half court." New York called me a predator. Yeah, there they call me a predator. But teaspoon has always been it for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason being is because I I even said that. What I try to do, um, I'm a defensive nut, but I also like to hand it out, like mm -hmm. to dish it out. So it was all spoon fed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so How was it to, when the first time you seen that spoon in the stand? <laughs> that spoon. You know, I thought they spoon, lost their mind. Yeah. I ain't know what <laughs> like, oh, people lost their mind. Zen. But it's New York. It's yeah. New York. And matter of fact, it was two of us. Yeah. Weatherspoon and Witherspoon. Witherspoon. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they had two spoons in the yeah. stands. I mean, yeah. it was the people were just so creative and they were involved. They were they were engaged in what we were doing. So yeah. it, it was huge. When when Carl called you to come back to school, you said I, he said he need to come home. You said I am home. He was in New York. Yeah. What does that say to you about how you are endeared and how you develop that relationship and that love for New York to say that like you from Pineland, Texas. Yeah. People think and, you're from and, New York. And yeah. when he started <laughs> off by saying, I thought you was from New York, then yeah. you just said, that's home. I'm home. Yeah. Like tell me like how, what does that mean to you to know that like I grew on this place and this place grew on me. And now it is what it is. That's we my here, like now. like I'll never not be from Pineland, but New York is my home. It became my home. Um because not only did I play in the garden, and of course, you know, it's Manhattan, but I represented every borough. That was, that was I couldn't have just one. Mm -hmm. I represented every borough and to be accepted, to be accepted. And it was nowhere that I could go in New York and no one knew me. I could cover up and they say, yeah, but I know those feet. Yeah, I know how your feet are. <laughs> they wouldn't know. And the, to be embraced the way that that city embraced me, um, that's home. I, yeah. I, I can't say anything but great things about New York City, and it's just a great place to step back into. And what's really crazy is some people sometimes think I'm still playing. I'm like, no, I've been gone away from the game, but it really feels good to know that you still feel me. Mm -hmm. You still feel me. Let me, ask you, let me ask you a fun question. Out of every borough, what did you like about that borough? Like from Brooklyn, <laughs> what did you like about Brooklyn? That's really crazy. My <laughs> where, where I really hung out the most mm -hmm. is Harlem. Harlem. I was in Harlem the most. Harlem is the most flashy now. You know flashy as crap. I loved it. <laughs> I loved everything about it. And anytime they saw me uh, by myself, they thought that was the weirdest thing in the world. Why are you here by yourself? You're not trapped. I don't do that. I want you to know I'm no better than you. Yeah. I'm just living a dream. I'm, I'm living city, my man. dream. Yeah. I want you to feel a part of me and me a part of you. Be able to touch me. I'll touch me. I I'm think real. that's why people like being cute so much. We nah. stayed in the mall and stay in there. High school games that's why, and everything. Listen, <laughs> I'm the first to say like 
my New York years were not my best years in my career. But like you said, they knew that I should chat straight. They knew I yep. wasn't no sucker. I wasn't with no sucker shit. You weren't gonna punk me all this and like I, I related to them because yeah. I I. I was like any other New Yorker. I was I acted like like you said, I put my shoes and my pants right. on one leg at a time. I'm not better than you. I'm the same as you. Right. I'm amongst the people like you could see. I done had a dude come talk crazy to me and I talk crazy back to him. Yeah. So they see that I'm the same as them. Yeah. I'm gonna return whatever energy you bring in. Yeah. I'm yeah. from Chicago now, so yeah. is it it could be whatever it is you want what it, it is. to be. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, I'm one state once and I and I felt like that was the, that was the way I felt about New York. Cause you know, you played there. We yeah. all know like yeah. People come to New York, and if you ain't you built the right way, you gon' you, you got here with your tail between your legs because it. they gonna test you on every level. Yeah. And if you're not resilient, and if you're not built a certain type yeah. of way with a certain level or a layer of tough skin, because they gonna talk. Yeah. The one thing I always respected and loved about New York, because I had to, it took me a time to figure it out. Because when I first got there, I was like, "What the fuck is that? Why they think they like this? Like, you know, I'm. Yeah. yeah. But then, like after you understand them, you see, like, hold up. Once you get to the 18, they feel like you ours yeah. and we yours. Like That's we can say what we want to say, but bet nobody else do that yeah. shit. We gonna bite their yeah. head off. You yeah. come for our play. Like we could do what we want to do right here because we got our thing yeah. going on. But like if you do it, like all right, don't cross me. Yeah. Like you feel me? Like and you. once I saw that, I was like, okay, cool. I'm I, I can like respect you. that. I'm going at you. You coming oh, yeah. at me? I'm coming it at you. Matter. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Clubs, game, whatever. I'm, I'm. You could see me. I, I'm with but the they shits. respect that. They respect they that. Did. There they were a couple of fans. I was like, okay, keep that same energy. We get out. We get out. We got our butts kicked. They talking that trash. I said, keep. The same energy, and I said, "Tell me where you sit, cause I want you when to come back in here." <laughs> Soon as we played, they told me where they sit. I had no problem going right there to them. Now high five me now, high five <laughs> me now. Keep your same energy. Take my five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they respect that. They respect that you gonna come right back at them. Yep. They respect it. How how was it when you first uh, got the coach in the NBA? Like Stan. Shout out to my man Stan Van Gundy. Everybody yeah. know I got big love for him. Like. Being part of that staff and being able to like, I was I was super hyped when I yeah. saw you know what I'm saying that he hired you and you were gonna be on there because I was yeah. like, damn, I was like, that's that's dope, you know. Yeah. And I knew that you were gonna be great. But for you, how was it for you walking in the door, you know, a new challenge and a new situation? What was that yeah. like? Well, you said it. It was a challenge, and that's all I'm about. I'm about the challenge. But my first year was under Gentry, Coach Gentry. And hey, G, G I that's our went, coach. Yeah, yeah, don't you know okay, I know. Okay, okay. So I went from, the, the way I started was going back and forth to the G League. Yeah. Back and forth. I was two weeks in G League, two weeks with the big guys, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, I accepted that because mm -hmm. I wanted, once again, I wanted to earn my keep. I wanted to earn my keep, you know. Yeah, but you just coming fresh off of being a Hall of Famer, that I would earn my keep. I don't want anyone to go, you, you can Google up all that stuff you want. You can Google that. But I want you to know who I am, the mm -hmm. person. I want to earn every single thing. Everything that you see there, I earned that. Mm -hmm. So now it's time to earn something more. Mm -hmm. So I would take this responsibility. I'm going to earn my way up to a seat. And that's how I feel about everything. I Stan put me in the back of the bench. I'm still back there in the back of the bench, but that's not where I sit. Mm -hmm. That's not where I sit. I can't become complacent. If I become complacent and I'm okay there, everyone else sees complacency yeah, in me. Right. So it's not that's not who I am, not what I'll ever be. So I'm pushing to be even better and, and get even more. I feel like that's that's what's gonna make it so so verified when you become a coach in the NBA. Cause I know you're gonna become a coach. We're gonna see it right here, right now. You can become Appreciate a coach you. in the NBA. That like you, speaking you don't, you speaking don't, on out, yeah, say it again. You don't take no no shortcuts. So when it when it do come to time, it's like man, I earned everything that yeah. I had. And like I say, me and Q, we love you to death, and man, we we definitely rooting for you, and we so we excited it. for the opportunity that you have, and you get the history that's gonna be made because it's time. That's the ultimate moves that start movement because there's so many of you all that's that, that's you know infiltrating the scene. And, 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 and it's earned. It's yeah. not by yeah. anything being handed or given out, but you guys are setting the stage and opening those doors for yeah. so many others like you to come behind. And y'all are the first ones, which is, you know, like you say, that's yeah. that's the start of the movement, but the movement continues with everybody that's Once seeing it yeah. the door. and knowing that now it's yeah. achievable because they opened those doors and they showed me that this can this can actually happen because right. look, they doing it. Yeah. And then y'all doing it the way y'all doing it. That's what that's what the real movement is. That yeah. With the professionalism and the excellence and the you not looking for handouts, you not you earning everything yeah. you get. So nothing is ever given. Nobody can take that away. You guys have no idea what, what you all are saying. 
what this means for us as women. Yeah. What this means for us to come from you all and you've played it. You've done it in the NBA level. You've done it. Mm -hmm. And for you to say what you're saying about us as women and the way that you're saying it, and knowing that we're capable. And that's the that's the most important thing. We're capable. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not coming in here. Basketball is basketball. Period. And I, of course you see me as a female athlete and I see you as a male athlete, right? But when that ball goes up, it's made the best athlete win. win. And I'm just as freaking competitive as you are. Straight up. Oh, I'm, I'm going to work dump. just as hard as you are. <laughs> I might not jump as high, might not be as quick, might not be as strong, but I'm, I'm going to use this. Yeah. That's where this comes That's in. I got to be wise. On the court is the one that's smartest. I got to be wise. <laughs> Nobody can't tell the whole story of basketball without you being in it. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. If you being real, Nancy, Lisa, all of y'all. Yeah. Everybody. Uh -huh. And to be on this side, you know, and this is big to say, to be on the NBA side, it's not, it's, I, I don't want to be a check box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't want to be a check box. I'm just taking my rightful place. Yeah. I'm just taking my rightful and place. And earning everything you get. I want to earn everything I get. Mm -hmm. Don't give me nothing. Don't check a box. Don't do that to me. Mm -hmm. Know that I'm going to earn my keep. I loved when I saw you begin working with the, with the Pelicans and stuff. Cause I was like, <laughs> I would go crazy if I could play for, if Teaspoon yeah. is over there yelling. It. I just know the energy. Like, just five minutes ago, I was getting all going like, and so I have no doubt in my mind that you, others, and all yeah. can have the same impact. I'm glad to see Becky Hammond getting her mm -hmm. chance. I, I wish she would have got a head job yeah. in the NBA, yeah. but I still believe she's going to do great things yeah. in the WNBA. She's brought the torch to this point to get mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. women closer mm -hmm. to that point yes. and she's done a huge part and she's been a huge part of that movement and she she can't ever be forgotten for that yeah. regardless yeah. if she went into the WNBA because I feel yeah. like she she was entitled to that if that was she was offered and that was something that she wanted to do because it's you know I do understand that yeah. it comes to a point where whoever you are you might get to the point where you want to try and you want to lead yeah. and see how you do it leading whether it's here you mm -hmm. know like I've had friends that took college jobs over going to the NBA because they get a chance yeah. to lead and see yeah. what they do. So I do understand yeah. that. And I, I would that was what I wanted to say about yeah. her just from doing it. I feel like that she earned that right to 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 do whatever she felt was best for her. And she still deserves the credit to to, to be that she brought the torch this far. And now yeah. whoever else picks it up, she still brought it that far. She broke yeah. down barriers in her own way too. Yeah. She she when she got in, she opened doors for everyone. Exactly. And you, you you have to remember when you when you get in. It's not only just about you. How can you knock the door down knowing that there's other women who are capable of getting the job done? And with her getting in with an unfortunate situation happening to her by tearing her knee mm -hmm. and then being in meetings with Coach Pop and getting a, he getting an opportunity to hear her basketball mind, right. and she's now on the bench there coaching. Mm -hmm. So something great came out of something that was so unfortunate. Yep. And, of course, you know when you have to make these decisions, it's about the moment, what mm -hmm. is best for you at that moment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that... If it comes back around, that at that comeback around, this is time. It doesn't mean that. It just means at that moment. You had a chance to to, to join the Mercury coaching staff. Mm -hmm. What was it about New Orleans that made you choose to stay here? Yeah, such a great question. And um, it was something that I thought about for an entire week. A lot of nights of crying uh, because the W means a lot to me. And most people always talk about that the W is less than the NBA. And, and it's not. It's basketball still. Uh, the W has a, a great meaning to me in my growth and development in the game of basketball and the exposure as well. Uh, so I had a um, long conversation with my family uh, and everyone who meant a lot to me, mentors, um, and asked one question that I thought was valuable is, um, have I given myself a chance? And that was big for me, uh, building something on the NBA side and with the organization, the Pelicans organization was, did I give myself a, a, an opportunity? Um, and I'm never going to run if I haven't given everything that I have to give for the opportunity. And that played in, in the factors of me saying, give yourself the chance, give yourself an opportunity. It was, it was not an easy decision for me. It was very difficult because people will talk about the W. Well, why would you not want to go back to the W? Mm -hmm. uh, the W is less than the, than the NBA. No, uh, no, it's not. Get because the chance. W means everything to me. It means yeah. absolutely everything to me. I would do anything for it to keep it alive. Whatever I would have to do, I would keep it alive. Uh, but you do what's best for you at the moment. Because when I tell you Phoenix was, they were absolutely excellent, excellent with me. They were excellent with me. Uh, it's a great thing when people hear what you have and they appreciate what you have and they know that it's, it's capable or you have the ability to go and get it done. Um, they gave me even more motivation for the things that they said about me. 
Mm. You and Tarasi in the locker room. Mm. I love to see that. What a love. They're admitted of it. When you first heard that you was inducted to the Hall of Fame, like HOF. Is, is that like these the, people crazy? That's what I said. What they doing <laughs> this country? Cherry girl? on top. Like, <laughs> like, how was that to be a Hall of Famer? You 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 were one of the greats, no matter what anybody say, you are one of the greats. Like, how is that to be a Hall of Famer and just to go through that whole Hall of Fame experience? It was great for my family, mm -hmm. not just for me. It was great for my family because of the struggle and for them to sacrifice for me because of a game that I loved. Mm -hmm. And it was something that we went through together and to know that I was at the end of walking away. I didn't, I didn't retire. Walking away and transitioning into something else to know that the game didn't forget about you as you walked away, that was probably the most important thing for me and my family is for us to celebrate everything that we've ever gone through in our lives uh, to have me to have the opportunity to walk in front of the world of basketball and stand in that position with many people that has stood there and then to be brought in with those three, Tina, mm -hmm. Foops, and Coop. Uh, and it was the best feeling to know that this is how it's topped off. Mm -hmm. It's just look out there and see all the people who's done it, and now you're there being mm -hmm. celebrated. What I want to know is this. Pineland, Texas, you come from humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. You come a long way, though. Yeah. Real long way. You came all the way to New York. So I feel like when you was in New York, at some point you was at a point you had a lot of comforts on. You was making good money. You was feeling good. What a teaspoon to do to treat herself. I don't want to hear about I bought my mama this. About, and I'm talking about what a teaspoon do to a treat teaspoon. herself. <laughs> was it a big body bends? Was it a what what a teaspoon do to swag out one time? Well, you look at it now that you are like, I probably should have never did that, but it was good. <laughs> like we all did. We all had that couple things where we did something. Where we, yeah, I shouldn't have did that, but right, it, well, it, let it me take you damn back good. now. Let me take you back. Okay. You said, all right, you were planning and making all that money. And we weren't making all that money in WNBA now, so I had to be careful with what I would do. I had to be right. very careful. Only thing I did, probably for myself, that was probably one of the biggest, and I still have the car to this day. To this day, I still have it. I, I got myself a Porsche. That's probably the biggest thing. Well, I'm gonna say like they said, the Porsche. 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 <laughs> I did, and I and I normally don't splurge on myself. It's all on my fam, never, never really me. Never really me. That was two-seater though, that's nice. <clears throat> but guess when the splurge came? See, the car's a 10. See, see how late it took me to splurge on myself? 10, so I got it. It's a Panamera four door. Oh, okay, okay. That was that. That's that's about it for me. I had one of them boys. Boy. <laughs> that's about me it. Too. That's me about too. It. I dig it. That's about it. I want to ask you: uh, start bench cut. You got to start one. You got to bench one. You got to cut one. Uh, Tisha Panatero, mm. Teresa Edwards, Don Staley. Who you start? Who you bench? Who you cut? <laughs> oh, that's crooked. Oh my God, that's tough. Uh, I'm gonna have to start Teresa Edwards. Mm -hmm. I'll bench I'll bench Staley and I have to cut T. Okay. Mm. Ooh, that was hard. T, I love you, man. You know that. Ooh, that was hard. Let me ask you uh, your favorite, your favorite, you don't gotta be top five, but your favorite five women's basketball player. Ooh. Okay. This is really gonna be crazy. All right. <laughs> I got um, Teresa Edwards, Boom. Cheryl Miller, Katrina McClain, um, Lynette Woodard. Mm, I think people I leave her. I heard that name in a minute. Yeah. Right there. Lynette Woodard, and I, I'd have to put Cynthia Cooper in there. Mm. Yeah, some of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I can't, yeah. can't, 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 I, I like that. I definitely like that. I ain't heard that name in so I, long. <laughs> I mean, I, and I think I think sometimes we we fail to Perfect. recognize what mm -hmm. they've done, you know. And it, I mean, they, I fall on their shoulders. Yeah, I fall mm -hmm. on their shoulders, so I gotta recognize what they've done for me. Yeah, that's uh, why I stopped asking the question yeah. about who's your top five instead of who's your favorite five. Who inspires you and the ones that you seen like, nah, that was my yeah player because them the ones that mean the most yeah. to me. Yeah. I want to ask you about uh, three people who are part of the organization. Yeah. And, and, you know, you can give us a take. Zion Williams, mm -hmm. you know, a, a guy so high profile. Yeah. Coming to the team, I know it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. I know he's a good kid, want to do the right thing, but his transition, what do you do to help him transition yeah. into 
coming back and doing what he supposed yeah. to do. I have an opportunity to work with him. That, mm. He's one of the guys that I work with. And um, first of all, I want to say this, is he's an amazing young guy. Yes, he is. And what I think people fail to realize, he's 21 years old. Baby. He's finding himself. Yeah. And I get tremendously frustrated when I hear all the talk about him. Yeah. Let's have something where we're talking to him to help him. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't like all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you become a part of the problem mm -hmm. when we're doing that. He's a wonderful young man who only wants to do great things. Mm -hmm. He knows his name is out there. He knows how big he is. So all he wants to do is great things and all he wants to do is play the game of basketball. Yeah. When you talk to him, you're talking to a very intelligent young man who knows his direction. Yeah. He knows his direction. He's just not going to get himself there. That's it. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Yeah, I hate when they talk about just kids that they haven't did nothing wrong, got no trouble or nothing. It's still something for them to talk about. I hate that, but I'm I'm a big fan of his, and I'm definitely rooting and playing for him. Yeah, yeah, I am too. I think it's a situation where we have to deal with everybody for who they are. Mm -hmm. We can't put expectations as to like I've heard things like, well, you know, LeBron came out and did LeBron is LeBron. Yeah. LeBron yeah. was, you know, he is who he is. He's unbelievable. He's he's been able to, yeah. you know, Everybody stay out of any type of career. issues <laughs> and stuff like that <laughs> right. for, for this long. He's 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 unbelievable yeah. and he's getting what he deserves for all of those things. But like we can't put that on anybody else for anybody else's reason. Like, you know, like mm -hmm. Zion is Zion. Every every guy that gets the next guy that gets picked number one, yeah. he'll be his own individual self, and he'll have his own individual issues that he has to navigate. Mm -hmm. And we can't put anybody else's what they accomplished or the way they handled things or the yeah. way they were able to maneuver through. We can't take and compare and put them side by side because every situation is different. Yeah. I feel like that's what's what's kind of happening to him. Mm -hmm. I don't know the whole. None of us know the whole situation because yeah. we not hands on like that. But like. You know, obviously he's an unbelievable talent. It's a lightning bolt topic right now because of the things that's going on. Anytime you're not playing, they're going to be talking crap yeah. about you. So, I mean, like like D say, man, we both, you know, we got a lot of love for him, yeah. wish him the best, and we hope you get back soon and just be back out there playing. Because we know once you get back playing, the all that other stuff goes it's away. It's going to all go away. Yeah. And he, he's an unbelievable talent, you all. And to be present and see it every day, it's like I haven't seen anything like it. Yeah. The explosiveness, the yeah. power, the speed, the quickness. He's very, very smart. His IQ is off the charts. Mm -hmm. He understands this game in and out. He knows how to get it done and how to keep everybody around That's what the him casual fans successful. Don't they don't know any of that. Yeah. They don't know how hard he studies the game, how much he studies the game. I have an opportunity to talk to him, and my only thing is this. I'm in this journey with you. Mm -hmm. I'm in it with you. I am you, and they'll tell you this is what I say. I am you. You are me. If you hurt, I hurt. If you go through, I go through. So mm -hmm. everything that you do, everything that happens, we go through this together. So this journey with this young man, I'm going through it with him. And I'm going to follow him in. He's going to do greater things than what most people can ever imagine. Okay, another player, Brandon Ingram. All-star. <laughs> like how yeah. how just just to see you know you you see the KD KD is mm -hmm. one of the best players and this is like a baby KD but he's the next generation. He can do a lot of stuff with his game. He got a lot of talent. Definitely, we are big fans of his game. But just speak on Brandon Ingram. That's a bad boy. Bad. That's a bad boy. You know, the, he's a three-level scorer. He can do whatever he want to. Um, his confidence is unreal. You know, he he believes in everything that he does. He doesn't believe there's anyone, anyone who can defend him. And that's the confidence you have to have, you especially have with them. the responsibility that lies on his shoulders, mm -hmm. especially bringing our team along and being the face of our squad right now and leading. He's leading. He's learning to lead. But what I like the most about him now is he's able to now make everybody better. Yeah. He's making everybody better around him. He sees the game with tremendous ease, but he's playing defense. He's on that defensive side of the ball. He's adding so much to his game that he's great offensively and he's being much better on the defensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. And when you can be that two-way player with the abilities that he, the abilities, mm -hmm. not the ability, the abilities that he has, mm -hmm. uh, this guy's name is going to ring forever in this league because Listen. he's just as good as anyone else that these names are ringing. Yeah. I'm telling you, he's just I, as good. I was early on him. I watched him since high school. Yeah. But like, and I can't say I watched games. I seen, you know, his mixtape stuff. So my coach, my boy, my best friend, D. Gates, was at Florida State. Uh -huh. He was recruiting him. Mm -hmm. I mean, he lost. He went to Duke, obviously. But like, 
he's my barometer. When I, you know how yeah. you see all of these yeah. ballers, life, all of this crazy stuff on the internet, all these high school dudes. Now my boy, he's a coach. He coaches, he's a head coach at Cleveland State now. So he's there. He's there all summer, all year long going yeah. to see these guys. So he knows. So when I, I see whoever I see on the balls, I, 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 I copy the link and I send it to D Gates. Hey, D Gates, yeah. well, what's up with homie right here? He said, oh, no, no, killer. Killer. Mm -hmm. He a killer. Yes. And ever since, he has been that killer. Like when he boy. got to LA and he got the bad rap and they was talking, I say, <laughs> I remember having to argue with my friend. They was talking about that in the situation when he got traded, that, that the Lakers were saying, no, yeah. we yeah. keeping cools and y'all take him. I say, no, 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 no. I say, <laughs> they said ain't no deal going down if that kid ain't coming. <laughs> B.I., like, that's not the situation. Like, he was, and he's shown. He's yeah. been the all-star. Like, yeah. he he's on another. Like, I call, I've been calling him, you know, like, baby KD since I first saw him because mm -hmm. even in high school, he was even more slim than yeah. he is then. But, yeah. like, you know, he was Stick still moving and doing something. some muscles now. And I was like, that was the first thing <laughs> you <laughs> think about bit. him. So it was like, yo, this dude, this dude a killing. Like you say, he, I like his smoothness. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I definitely love the fact that, like you said, he's starting to be able to be a triple-double threat. He's facilitating. He could he could dish the ball, getting double-figure yeah. six, and then yeah. he locking up. He yeah. rebounding, yeah. beating stuff on the glass, yeah. and he moving them puppies. I ain't got no complaints. Young yeah, boy he, coming. He, he's only going to get better. I mean, you, he's just scratching the surface. This kid is, I mean, like you just said, he's a killer, and he's a joy to watch play. Yeah, um, nobody sees behind the game. scenes what he does. You yeah. know, the studying that he the does. The work he put in. Nah, he puts it in. He's a film watcher. He's, we watch the crap out of film. He watch all of his players. What CJ just said. He watch He's seeing watching YouTube. Like, he, he does he, it. He, he, like, he, can, he a hoop junkie. Oh, yeah, like, that's, that's the type of people I love to hear he about. He, like, he takes well, his okay. business seriously. He's yeah. serious about his business. One more person. Swin Cash. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Swin Cash, That's one of my favorite UConn. <laughs> it's like, how is it to have Swin Cash part of the uh, organization? Both of y'all two turned up to me, though. Both of y'all two turned up in is. there. She's, like, it's too much. That's too she, turned up. She's definitely a, a, a good person. Like, yeah. just tell us about Swin Cash and her being a part of the organization and you she know, coming you, soon to the next two heads. women in this organization doing y'all thing. That's so. how I'm here. Yeah. That's how I'm here. Uh, once she was brought on, she brought me with her. And that was due to us being with the Liberty. Both of us was with the Liberty. And mm -hmm. I actually trained Swin. Mm -hmm. I trained Swin for her final season. Uh, Swin would say to me, Swin, hey, look, I'm 36. I can't do what I used to do. <laughs> I grabbed my bag, put my bag on my shoulder, and I walked out. I was like, you can't do it? Okay, fine. You cannot have a number and say, I can't do what I used to do. Mm -hmm. Kent is real. Yeah. But I can say, I can't yet. Yeah. Yet. And put can and yet together it's possibility. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, I put my bag on my shoulder. You said you can't do it. I'm out of here. And when you feel like you can, holler at me. Holler yeah. at me. So no, you can't go into it like that. And Swim worked so hard and got herself ready for that season. We worked our butts off. So when she got this job, she said, "You coming with me?" She said, "This is where you belong." She said, mm -hmm. "You, this is where you belong." Shout out to Swim. Uh, Swim, I, I, I love her so much for for trusting and believing and stamping her name on my name. Yeah. That meant a lot to me. That's but what she's doing, thing. no, it's not. She, it, there's a level of trust there, a level yeah. of belief. Yeah. Um, and what she's doing and how she's changing things for women in the front office, it's unreal. It's unreal how she carries herself. And mm -hmm. uh, when love everyone Swim. sees her, you know, they see perfection. They Every see time professionalism. You see Swim, it's like I know her. Every time. <laughs> like every time I and see her. And she's always so, always so, so, so sweet. So super cool <laughs> yeah. and in yep. a great mood, yep. uplifting That's her. everybody. Yep. Like I'm telling you, like every we time. work together at turn, like you it'd be just a fun time. Yeah. She, they back in the makeup room singing and dancing and doing different stuff. She was always great to be around. Yeah, she's yeah. fun yeah. Shout she, out I, to Swim. She's fun to be around. <laughs> exactly. She's a straight shooter. Straight you know, and that's what you want from someone like her to tell you what it is. Swin, we coming for you soon. Come on, Swin. Yeah. Come on, Swin. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we feel me. You know what it is. <laughs> well, listen, this has been amazing. We appreciate you. I appreciate you guys. Us coming through. We out here in the bayou. You know what I'm saying? New Orleans in your backyard right now. This was amazing. Thank you, guys. They can't tell the story of basketball without having some teaspoon in there. Like, look, we <laughs> didn't pull teaspoon. up. Just a little teaspoon. Got the man. blackest wine in New Orleans. <laughs> Might get some beignets later. We appreciate you. I appreciate you, you guys this so much. Like, Thank, you. Real, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. One of some of our favorites. This is, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? This is this is little, little Hennessy. Very special. 
And um, it's a collector's edition. A special because edition. Because they want to hear, look, mama, we made it. They got your boys on the back. I got it. That's it right there. That's you know what's everybody up. in the hood proud of us on this. Like, look at that, man. They got, got, they got we your on boys. That That's what's up. I think y'all. They got us on that yak now, so you know. Hey, well, you on there. I appreciate you guys so much yeah, for this, having me. This is, like, for real dope. You one of our all-time favorites, and um, we still love everything you're doing. We wish you nothing but the best and continue success and keep representing. Mm-hmm. You yes, bet. Yes, you yes. got it. Appreciate you guys. Thank you.